thank you so much here in independent television. We understand that uh, the world is a global village, and that's the reason why we go the extra mile uh, to make sure that uh, we give you what you need to uh, go on, on on your day as far as information is concerned, as far as uh, entertainment is concerned, and uh, as far as uh, education is concerned. Well, today on the program this morning on ITV, we are going to be starting our discussion segment with um, uh, what seems to be the very latest now in the country. When I say the very latest, I'm talking about uh, uh, the collection of uh, our PVCs, the voters' card. Uh, if you go through town yesterday, I was actually discussing with one or two friends, and uh, the first question uh, that they popped in was, have you collected your PVC? Of course, I was so proud to let them know that I have my PVC, and uh, that was the reason why that uh, uh, when I started this program this morning, I have to let you see it, even the viewer out there, that I do have my PVC. And uh, I don't know, if you have not gotten your PVC, please make sure that you have your PVC, uh, because without this permanent voter's card, you cannot be part of uh, this election. Even as we expect the election that uh, is going to commence from uh, all past Saturday, that's on the 16th of uh, February, to be precise, uh, we have some issues that... Um, uh, presently going on, uh, some complaints here and there that uh, they have, people have not collected their PVCs and uh, some have even said that they have gone to uh, their registration uh, centers, times with that number and uh, is not availing them of any uh, opportunity in sight for them to get uh, their PVCs. What are the issues? This morning uh, we have to bring Mr. Wilfred Ifoga, if you've been following us on this program, uh, this morning on ITV, even the Pigeon English version, Good Morning from Benin. He has uh, almost been a kind of a regular face on this program now uh, because of uh, uh, the importance of, uh, of his office at this time. So, you welcome to this program this morning on ITV. Good morning, Mr. Evans, yeah. and uh, good morning, listeners, at home. I think you have to congratulate me first. Yeah, uh, because congratulations. I have my PVC. <laughs> okay. I mean, this was actually issued to me uh, 2011 or thereabouts. Yeah, exactly. That was uh, when actually we started this uh, process. Okay, and all the features are still there. Of I course. kept it intact. Exactly. My name, my soul name, my middle name, my date of birth. Everything still intact. Uh, my address, number 14, Orca Avenue. That's uh, my uh, my hope my base in Benin, Benin, Benin. All right. everything is still intact so and from the way from what I can see the card is well kept you okay. never took it around or yeah. put it in a wallet uh, because even as we speak we know of some people who have uh, unintentionally destroyed or damaged their PVCs okay. because of the way they keep their PVCs okay now I, 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 I was watching uh, the news even this morning okay. uh, we had it yesterday night and even this morning mm -hmm. complaints here and there yes. and uh, I like has been accused that uh, you guys are not giving out PVCs what is the situation well it's not that we are not giving out the PVCs for the PVCs available they are being given out and um, yes there are a pocket of challenges uh, which has to do with um, those who have actually registered those who did transfers um, those who requested for replacement of their cards, whether defaced or lost, and of course those who did correction of their names. Yes, these informations were sent to our national headquarters via integration, and most of these um, um, issues are implemented so that the PVCs can be produced. Yes, PVCs have been produced and sent to the states. Uh, those states we have received and we are distributing, but somehow we have this challenge of some of the PVCs mixed up. So as soon as um, maybe ordinary is expected that when you come as um, a, 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 someone that has registered before and um, you are there to collect your PVC, we just sort it out and give to you. But somehow not all the batches of cards do come like that exact. So most time it takes time after going through, you find out that some cards, maybe those who just registered, you find them in cards that are coming for those who did transfers. So most time the official is working. If, for example, we have to do a search because we have said these cards are meant for transfer cases or these cards are for those who just registered, I will just face the cards for those who just to look for those. But now, they have to go through all batches of cards, whether the replacements, whether defaced, whether transfers, or even those who just register in order to sort out for this thing. So we've even advised our officers in the field to take time out. Yes, we had complaints of they said some of our officers, the attitude towards those who come to them. Mm. Yes, I will have to apologize for that yeah, because somehow the pressure of work somehow still tells on them, has its toll on them. But I will have to apologize. We have spoken to them that they have to be cautious enough yeah, because somehow it is it's not a nice thing or 
uh, someone coming to pick up the PVC after going through the stress of trying to register, then picking up the PVC again is another form. So we just told them, please, whatever it is, within a few days between now and when the election comes up, it will all be over. So I still want to appeal that we are still expecting pockets of card, even as we have just about two days to go for the collection of the PVCs. Okay. Now, b b before we talk about the uh, two days to go, uh, just like what you, people have said, that yes. the collection ends on the 8th. Yes. Now, um, I'm not too happy, uh, Mr. Ivoga. I yes. must let you know this, because I remember I, I brought your predecessor here, okay. uh, Mr. Francis Ikefan. Okay. Uh, that was sometime last year when uh, it was reported that um, the office premises okay. uh, was uh, Part of the office premises okay, was, was flooded. flooded and all that. Now, issues of card readers were reported, uh, data capturing uh, machines, machines were, were yes, destroyed and all that. And yes. Mr. Ekbefan told me, he promised me as a matter of fact, yes. that that is not going to be an, an issue. issue yeah. I mean, it's an issue with INEC now. Why? Okay, um, let me start from here. You know, we reported, yes, card readers were destroyed and some of the laptops that were used for capturing also got submerged. I know what that means. So the commission tried to retrieve those that can be retrieved. But for the card readers, yes, I can stay there. Is Finec a good state ready for this election? Let me just tell you, for the card readers, mm -hmm. we are ready. We just re we have received card readers for a new state. New no. ones. Are you sure? Ah. If, uh, I mean, maybe because, I had, because, you can say that now because we are not putting the card readers into test now. I mean, the election no, no, as, not as I speak now, they are doing upgrades, um, software, whatever, upgrade of all the card readers we are talking about. A team of uh, technicians and experts are working on them right now in preparation for the elections. Then talking about the other issue that has to do with the registration of voters. Yes, we had uh, some of the systems that were damaged. And because of that, the local governments that were affected, uh, immediately they have to send out messages. So which local governments? Um, precisely, uh, Oredo and Nikubaoka okay. had that challenge. So they sent out text messages and um, calls in some cases. They, they made calls to these individuals to come back to INEC office where they did their registration to re-register just to guarantee that their information is not lost. And um, the commission, you know, we don't just publish the register. Mm. We go through a process of um, claims and objections. It's like yes, at times, most Nigerians don't know that this process takes place, except it's getting very close to the election. And we had that process. Apart from that, quarterly, when we were doing that severe, we had this quarterly break to display the register so people can come for claims and objections. Claims simply means it's a process of you coming to INEC or the official, the revision officer, to tell them, look, you have registered me, but this information about me is not correct. The age written there is not correct. Maybe the sex, you have written female instead of male, and maybe the address not correct, or that you are doing a change or something like that. That's the process of claim. You, there's a prescribed form for it, you fill it, and this will be used to effect the necessary corrections. And also there's objection. Objection simply means someone coming to raise an objection against a name already um, listed in our voter register. Probably that person is dead, or probably that person was not of age, or maybe that person is foreigner. So you raise up an objection, and if well buttressed, and there's evidence for that, I neck who go through the process of removing that name from the register. Uh, like I was talking about last year, precisely in November 6 to 12, seven days, we had that period where the registers were taken to every unit in Edo State. We have 2,627 uh, uh, polling units the in Edo State. Uh, yeah. So the registers were taken there, and it was there for that period for people to come and check if their name it's We're actually not displayed, that yeah. there, of course. So if most of these people actually uh, made that, took a time to see what they have at the polling units, they would have been able to discover in time to, to know, oh, my name is not on the register. Or probably the name I have there was misspelled, or probably um, a different name or different surname has been given. And thereafter, I ne after that process, I ne went back again, based on information for those who actually went to check, cleaned up the register, and it was formally presented to stakeholders on the 7th of January that just passed. That's when the register was given. And that's the register we are going to use for the okay, election. Okay, uh, uh, some of the stories uh, we are getting as fillers now, yes. uh, they are not too impressive. I mean, okay. uh, take a situation whereby uh, prospective voters okay. uh, are left at their own fate. Uh, they get to INEC uh, centers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, several cards are uh, brought out, okay. and uh, but prospective voters are asked to look for the cards uh, themselves. Uh, is it that INEC is overwhelmed or you don't have adequate staff to search 
uh, cards for uh, uh, the electorate. Uh, what is going on? Oh. Well, seeing that I'm giving opportunity you know, for... You even, you even mentioned it. Exactly. I mean, you, you talked about uh, cards being mixed up. Yep. Uh, take, for example, I come to your, to your center to look for a card. In, in millions of cards, I may probably not find my card. Okay, let me put it this way. Um, it's not like maybe the card, the mixing up of the cards is not from the INEC office. For example, now, we had to, it is not done in Edo State. It is produced centrally, okay? And when I'm talking about batching, yes, yeah, we, I know it's automated, but at times, it's not really 100%, putting the right cards in the right spot. So it may be just maybe two, three percent of these issues, challenges we are talking about. Yes, at times when they come to the office, you know, they move them to the field mm. and they bring them back. So maybe at times they, because of wear and tear, even the packaging might make them to mix up. So that aside, uh, I remember we have taken these cards previously, like the time you collected your PVC now. I wouldn't know if you collected about 2012 or 13 or so. I think I collected this 2011. Or no, no, no. 2011, these cards were in trade. Okay, I think, I think about 2013. 2012, 2012, 2013. 2012, 2013. Exactly. Yeah. We went out to the field, every polling unit, and that exercise was done for more than like a, a week or so, or thereabouts, where we even recruited um, personnel to do that. You know what that means, and you know the cost of that. Then after we went back, then during the, um, the periodic CVR updates, we now uh, rather uh, went for the distribution of this thing at um, ROA level, what we call the, at the world, mm. we'll do it there. So most times, you find that most people are not interested, except it's getting very close to election. If there's an election, but they don't even know anything is happening. So even in this process, just in January, yes, 16th to 21st of January, we also had a, the, the collection of PVC at the world levels. Yes, although that process, stepped up the collection and so but it wasn't as impressive as we expected it to be before we went back to the office. That's why I said, okay, on the end of this month, just about the day after tomorrow now, uh, today is six, so the day after tomorrow. About are, two, two more yeah, days. Yeah. Two more days, that's yeah. the day after tomorrow now. The collection will stop so that I next staff. So what happens to, what happens to uh, a prospective voter that registered yes. and just because of some inadequacies yes. somewhere, is unable to get his or her card. So what happened to that person? So that's what we are saying. Let that person go out now to pick up the card. Okay, because like I said, with all these inadequacies, I, I tell you, even up to election day, some people will not pick up their cards, even if continue to give out cards. So it's not expected that everybody will definitely collect the cards. Okay, but then the opportunity is now for those hearing now, just go there and pick up your card if. Your intention is to use it to vote. Okay. Now, uh, uh, you, you will recall that uh, I picked up my own 2012. Yes. So this is 2019. So Fine. this card has actually stayed with me for seven good years. Of and it's still very much intact. Exactly. Now, what we have now probably suggests that uh, uh, the quality of cards that INEC is printing now is mm -hmm. not durable, uh, irrespective of uh, the millions that INEC has gotten over time. <laughs> Uh, because I remember when the issue of uh, your money came up, a lot of people actually said that that money is so much. Mm -hmm. How come INEC has had plenty of money over this time and still we don't have qualitative uh, uh, PVCs as at, just like on like when you started? Okay, if, if I ask you, this is your card. Have you been carrying it all along with you? Of course. And where, how do you keep it? Well, I, I keep it in my wallet. Okay. And, and it's still very much intact. You can see for yourself all the it's features your, are still there. The wallet, is it damp or is it always dry? Well, it's always dry. <laughs> and I, I know I'm saying it, okay? Because there, there was these flyers and even on INEC and Facebook page, we posted and some posts there on how to handle your PVCs. For example, now you are a man, and most times we are tempted to keep a... PVCs or any other card, even including ATM cards in our wallet, and put it in the back pocket, and maybe you sit. If you have a leather, if your car seat is leather covered, you know what that means. Heat can generate, and also, if, if um, the weather is quite humid, it can, yes, alter whatever is there, and it peels off, mm. okay? And there, there are some people, they just, maybe they pick the card, the way they handle it, you know it will not last up to one week. I still have, I have my PVC like this, and it's still there. And moreover, the way you handle it also determines whether most of the features printed on it um, we, we remain there. So that's why we say, but then, even if whatever is on it cleans off, the card reader is able to read it because there's an embedded chip. I think that's one of the most important things you have in that card, the, okay. the chip that is embedded, and there's an antenna. Mm. So that's why it should not even allow something that will make it bend or break. 
it will affect the component inside. And if it does, and the candidate is unable to read it, that means you can't vote on election day. Okay, uh, what about this talk that um, the results are going to be uh, collated centrally, some say manually, some say mm. electronically, and uh, it's raising okay, uh, concerns? Okay, no, no, I think, uh, well, so, let, let's, well, uh, I'm head of the Department of Education and Publicity. Just uh, this, but you are a staff of I guess I know, I just want to let them know. Yes. At least they need to know uh, what the process is like, okay, what we do. You, we have card readers deployed in all the units, of course. The card reader helps us to uh, helps our accreditation process just to ensure no one, um, uh, okay, what do you call it now, um, truncates the process, yeah. yes, or violate the, the rules or guidelines. So it helps to yeah, give credibility to the accreditation process. And, and of course, when we talk about um, the issue of collation, yes, in the, at the World Collation Centers, of course, there's a personnel that we as the collation is being done manually, the manual is simply the collation sheet they are using, being handled by the collation officer, of course, to enter the figures that have been brought in by the presiding officers. And of course, there's another, the e-collation um, assistant there, who puts this thing together electronically in the system. Of course, as soon as they are true, that one is transmitted into the INEC database so that, well, eventually, between there and the next point of collation, something has happened. We can feel like, okay, what really happened? This is not what we got at that point in time. Mm. Okay. Then saying centrally, of course, at every point in time, there is a central point for collation. Mm. For example, now, let's just look at a constituency now. A, a those states is a constituency for the governor, but although we are not having governorship election. election yeah. All right. So um, at every polling unit, after they have done their work, they go to the next stage, which is the World Coalition Center at the World Collation Center. So there's a central collection for all units in the world. Then from the world, we go to the local government area level now, which is a constituency now on its own. That is a central collection for all the wards in that local government. Mm. From local government, from there, the collection officer moves to the next level, which is at the state level. And at the state level, there's a central collection. Fine, I know we are not having any of this for the governor, but we have for the, the what is it called now, the, um, the National Assembly, which has Senate, and House of Reps. So at a different constituency level, you have them being um, collated at a particular point where that constituency covers. So I think that is it. So I think when we, when most of us try to use some terms mm. with INEC, they should understand there are different uh, terminologies we use. Yeah, so they, 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 you won't blame people exactly. somehow because their expectations are yeah, high. high. High, exactly. Uh, I mean, everybody really wants, wants to participate in this election. Exactly. So when people begin to uh, you know, points, accusation <laughs> figures exactly. here and there. You may not want to blame them. Now, there's this also, uh, this talk on uh, how your ad hoc staff came about. Okay. Now, uh, some say that uh, so far, uh, it's an allegation anyway, I guess so far I that uh, it's almost uh, been discovered yeah. that more than 80% of your ad hoc staff, mm. that they are card carrying members of uh, the ruling party, the APC, right. against the backdrop that they are supposed to be students of uh, right. tertiary okay. institutions, okay. NYC members, and all mm, that. All right. So w what me method was okay. really employed well, by me, to get yes, the ad hoc staff? Yes, in pulling our ad hoc personnel, okay, um, first of all, we, for the presiding officers and the assistant presiding officers, the first line of choice is um, the serving core members. Okay. Yes, NYC. So where we exhaust them, the other group of people that cannot perform these duties are students of federal higher institutions. Well, did, you, did you people go the extra mile to actually find out if uh, no, these no, seven okay, members me, are card carrying members? I know. It, uh, I don't need to find out if they are card carrying members because most of them in a do state here naturally are not from a do state. Mm. They came from another place. What we go? We don't go after whether they are members of this party or this party. All we know they are. They are NYC members, so it's not for us to now start investigating whether they are card carrying members. No, but that's that's why they are in orientation. That's, no, that's, let me that's finish. Issue, yeah. That's allegation. Mm. That's allegation. So as you're sitting here now, I expect you to be neutral in whatever you are saying, even if you are a card carrying member of any party. That is not the issue. But what you represent shows that you are neutral. For, for example, now I think there was a time. Um, but, 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 but don't you think someone you can have a card carrying member? Someone can say, I'm, okay. bound, "I'm bound to." Uh, to want to show sentiment, don't you think so? Well, um, I think in the recruitment process, all we demand for is one, um, are you a serving member? Moreover, we, we don't just get the list on our own, we go to NYC, give us this list. Okay, that's one. Then if you are saying that, 
That means being the fact that I work with the, the federal government pays me, that means you are invariably saying the government of the day, which is at the national level, that I'm a card carry member of the party. <laughs> that's what's uh, exactly. So that's where I'm looking at it now. So invariably, for me to be a federal civil servant now, that means I must be a card carry member of APC. That's what they are trying to say. That's what it translates to be. So I'm just telling you how we pull our ad hoc personnel, OK? Because even if they are not card carrying members or they are card carrying members, and they are not part of the officials for them, of course, they have to vote, don't they? Mm -hmm. so, as it, so the thing is that some of all these um, allegations, they are just too, they are quite trivial. Okay. So, now, yeah. let's go back to the collection of the PVCs, PVCs one yeah. more time. So what do you think that um, uh, prospective voters yeah. have not done that they need to do uh, so that they can, you know, uh, get their PVCs. Yes. Okay. Um, you see, somehow, most of the voters themselves got it wrong in the first place in most of these things we do. You know, when they approach the registration officers, we try to do a kind of voter orientation for them to let them know this exercise that is going on is not for old registrants. Some of them we deny that they have not registered before. And there's one thing they fail to understand. Fine, you can, you can deceive me, but somehow the system has your firm information. Majority of people probably crying out now must have have their data imputed into the INEC database for the second time. And this will lead to not getting their PVCs or okay. their information. Double, double that. Yes, can also that's, that's, that's multiple registration now. Because what is key there is the biometric information, not just the name, but biometric information. Because I know some people will say, oh, instead of me going through the process of transfer or something like that, I'll do, do it a second. second time. And they do it, and the system is, oh, I have this before. We clamp so it down. The, both of them? We just, the, both of them, especially if you don't have the first one and the second one didn't come out. So you are nowhere. Are you getting it? So some of these challenges we experience. So the one thing I know is this. Yes, we are still um, cleaning up the process. And I just want everybody to key into it. Because INEC has upgraded, but just that stakeholders refuse to upgrade. Yeah, but, 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 but in that light, don't you think that there's also a need for INEC to probably extend the uh, date of uh, uh, collection? collection. Uh, because after all, um, uh, the campaigns are going to end about well, 48 hours to the That's election. So campaign. don't you think INEC should also extend? Uh, because a lot of people have actually not collected. You, you won't believe it. So the question will be, where have they been since the collection started? You know what? Let me just tell you one issue. The, the political class, their leaders, have a great role in this. You know, when this CVRS I started or something like that, you see them encouraging their people to come and register. They go as far, probably getting buses, take them from the, the communities, and take them to this location where they are doing the registration. Mm. But at the point of collection of PVC, because most of them, they are not as enthusiastic as them, after they will just tell you, what's the point going that far to go and pick up my PVC? If they make the same effort in bringing them to come and register and do the same effort for them to collect their PVC, you find that some of these things we do. But most of them we want to insist, let me collect it by proxy for them. And that I cannot do. Of course, I cannot do that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so your message this morning is that uh, prospective voters are Exactly. Those, those vying for positions now. And you know you have a um, bunch of your supporters from Patrick. But I, I need to look into that camera. Yes. Let them look into the Of course. I, I, I want to say this clearly to the political class. Uh, you know the efforts you made during the process of registration, trying to get your people to come and register. And now they need to collect these cards. And because of the distance somehow from the collection point to where they are, I still want to appeal to you. As you go to Canvas for votes, also take our time in as much as you educate them on how to do the proper thing by um, some printing well. Also, see how you can also take them down to the collection point to also pick up their PVCs. Mm. And uh, when you say political class, you take them down to pick their Because PVCs. right now, they are the major beneficiary yeah. if these people pick up their cards. I, I think the message is that go out there and collect your PVC. This is my own. You cannot use it. I cannot use yours. So go out there and collect it. I think that's the message. Exactly. That's the message. Because there was a time, I think, yeah. we were in a stakeholders um, gathering, and someone uh, was trying to accuse our office. He said they, they gave cards to a particular group. 
but they refuse him from collecting. So we now say, well, we don't give our cards by proxy. Okay. Exactly. And we remain on that. That's our stand. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Wilfred. You. Uh, thank so you. I'll get your commendation one more time for keeping uh, this proxy for the past. Exactly. No, I, I have to commend you. All right. Thank you so much. I have much. seen that so somehow. Much. You just look cleaner than I mine. Very late. <laughs> exactly. All the pictures in chat. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll take a short pause now so that uh, we do. Well, by the way, I was going to ask you, yeah. uh, with what is going on in Rivers States, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> is INEC going to, what is INEC's position uh, so far? Uh, well, I, can't, I cannot say INEC's position. If I had uh, my legal officer here, and I should have been able to say uh, much on that. But one thing is, you know, our, our democracy is evolving. And um, the way we're not getting interested in the electoral process is also there. People are not getting interested. And a lot of things have happened that never happened before. Mm. And people are seeing it for the first time. And it's, I, I want to say, yes, the commission needs to be commended. You know, we were talking about the Oshun thing the other time. And I said, you know why that Oshun thing is like that? Because the vote now counts. That's why you cannot have results coming neck to neck. It never happened before. Mm. So we are still going to see a lot of things like this that, that will happen. But one thing I know definitely, the commission will ever stand by the side of the law. That's it. Even with the fact that uh, the window of opportunity has since elapsed? Well, let's see what happens as it unfolds. That's it. Anyway, we'll take a short pause now. Thank you so much one more time, Mr. Thank Wilfred, you. for joining us on this program uh, this morning. We'll take a short pause now so that uh, all the segments will come your way. Please stay tuned.